let's calculate the deposit needed to achieve a future value. And here we are going to be using compound interest. Now, what is compound interest? Basically, we are going to have a compounding period. So how often throughout the year are we going to compound? If you compound annually, that means it's just one time a year. If you do it quarterly, quarter means four, so that's four times a year. And so that means if we, let's say quarterly, if I put amount in, after the first quarter, we add the interest. So this is quarter one. That gives us our new dollar amount. We'll make it bigger. So then we add interest. It's going to be a new interest for quarter two. We add those two together to get our new value. Every time we have a new value, we're going to add the interest based on that. So when money grows with compound interest, every time your value gets bigger, the interest also gets bigger. It's the idea. You want your money to compound as much as possible when you are saving because you'll save the most money. All right, let's talk about formulas. If we are talking about a periodic, so that's quarterly, annually, uh, monthly, those types of things, we have the amount at the end equals our initial principal times one plus the interest rate divided by the number of compounding, take it to the number of compounding time number of year, right? So we're multiplying those together. Continuous is slightly different, and that's where we get into P equals E to the RT, where P is our initial principal, R is our annual interest rate, T is the number of years. E is a mathematical constant. Your calculator should have an E button. E is approximately 2.71. It goes on forever. It's an irrational number. Just use the button on your calculator. Let's do some examples. Let's calculate the deposit needed into an account if you want to have $5,000 after eight years when the account has an interest rate of 3% compounded annually. So first, let's again just kind of think through our formula and Let's then talk about what each of these values uh, represent. So A is our ending amount. We want to have $5,000 at the end. We're trying to find the deposit needed. That's the initial principle. Then inside our parentheses, we have 1 plus our interest rate. Well, our interest rate is 3%, so 0 0.03. And we're going to divide that by the number of times we're compounding in a year. Well, we're compounding annually. Annually means once a year, so n is 1. For my exponent, I'm going to take 1 times the number of years, and this says 8 years. So we substitute in our values as needed. Now we can simplify. So let's go ahead and just start by simplifying. We have 5,000 equals initial principal. We have 0 0.03 divided by 1 which is just 0 0.03. When you are doing compounded annually, the formula is a lot nicer. So we can simplify inside. I'm just doing this step by step. If you have a good calculator, you can do this basically all in your calculator at one time. I like to show steps so that we know exactly what we're doing. Now we have to take our exponent. So 1.03 to the eighth. You can do that work out, or you can think of it as, let me just do this over here, 5,000 equals P times 1.03 to the 8th. You can also think of it as we are just going to divide both sides by 1.03 to the 8th. The only thing I would tell you if you're going to do this is make sure you put the denominator all into either parentheses or brackets. You want to make sure that 8 of an exponent stays with the 1.03. All right, you also could type that in as 5,000 divided by... Um, parentheses 1.03 to the eighth. Because the 1.03 is a number, the eight will go with that. At any rate, we end up with an initial deposit of approximately $3,947, um, and it goes 0 0.046172, it goes on and on and on. If you wanna make sure that you have $5,000, you're going to need to round this down. So we're going to say $3,947.04. By putting that money in, you will end up with a little over $5,000, like barely any. Okay, so keep that in mind. If you round it up to 0 0.05, you will end up just shy um, of the 5000 mark.
All right, now let's change our, we're gonna still do a compounded problem, but we're gonna go monthly. So again, think through your formula. A equals P1 plus R over N raised to the N times T. Let's plug in what we know. We wanna have $3,700 after six years when the account earns 2.5% interest compounded monthly. All right, so we wanna have 3,700. We don't know the initial amount. Our interest rate is 0 0.025, right? 2.5% divided by monthly means N is going to be 12 because there are 12 months in a single year. Then we take 12 times six. Now this is just not nearly as nice as what we had before. So let's think about our exponent. That's gonna be 72 and all this in here is just not great. So you have a couple of options. First, take the 12 times six and that's gonna be 72. So let's go ahead and just make that, oops, make that something that we know. And I'm trying to make this as easy as possible with you for your calculator. Okay, so if you wanna type all of this in, you've gotta use the order of operations. And the key is if you don't know how to use your calculator in a certain way, you're gonna get the wrong answer. So first things first, let's do this the way that's probably the easiest. And that is dividing both sides by one plus 0 0.025 over 12 raised to the 72nd power. Okay, so this is where you're like, whoo, that could get ugly. And you're right, it can. So this is what it looks like if you type this into your calculator. You're gonna hit 3,700 divided by parentheses, parentheses, do the double parentheses, one plus 0 0.025 divided by 12, parentheses, raise that up to the 72nd power, and parentheses. Okay, so you wanna make sure that the outside parentheses there, make sure that it all stays together in the denominator. That's gonna give you your answer of, we're gonna go with $3,185.11. Again, you're gonna to need to round down to ensure that you get the full amount. Now, let's go back to the blue line here. If you simplify what's inside, you're gonna get 3,700 equals P times approximately 1.002083, da da da, raised to the 72nd power. If you then take that, keep it in your calculator, raise it to the 72nd power, now we have 3,700 equals P times 1.161652, keep it all in there, we get our answer. Many, many calculators have like an answer button. So, and that, the answer button means whatever you previously had as an answer. So from that, if you have this number in your calculator, the next step would be to hit 3,700 divided by the answer because it will populate the 1.161652 da 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 da. So like I have a TI-83, I would hit second and then the negative button at the bottom and that gives me the uh, previous answer. If you have a TI-30X2S, um, it's the same. It's the second with this button. So I think most TIs are probably the same with that, and that's gonna help you with that one. All right, let's do one more example, and here we're gonna do compounding continuously. So remember here we have A equals P E to the RT. All right. We want to have $8,200 after four years when the account earns 2.7% interest compounded continuously. So let's plug in what we know. We want to have $8,200. Because we're calculating the deposit needed, the P stays as is. As I mentioned earlier, E is a mathematical constant. And then your exponent is going to be your interest rate, 0 0.027 times the number of years, which is four. Thinking through your order of operations, we've got to multiply these two together first. So 8,200 equals P times E raised to the 0 0.108. Now again, we're trying to get P by itself, so we would divide by E raised to the 1, 0 0.108. By doing so, right, these would cancel out, and we get approximately $7,360.54. Again, rounding down to ensure that we get the 8200 If 
you're like, I don't, I don't know what any of this means. Well, that's, that's okay. You got to practice here. But find the E button on your calculator. Now, E on my calculator, again, dealing with a TI-83 or a TI-30X2S, you're going to find the E to the X button um, attached to the LN. So you would hit second LN. And when you do that, it's going to show up in your calculator E, and then I think it has um, one of these. All right, so that, when you would hit the second LN, give you the E, then you type in the 108. All right, so in your calculator, you would type in 8200 divided by E to the X to the 0 0.108, and that will give you the answer of $7,360.54. With these questions, there are two super important pieces. One, using the correct formula, substituting the values in the correct position. And two, knowing how to use your calculator. If you know those two pieces, it makes it all a whole lot easier.